live from the Hartford Civic Center. It's the Hartford Wolfpack taking on the Philadelphia Phantoms. Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSG Network's coverage of the Rangers' top farm team, the Hartford Wolfpack. Sam Rosen along with John Davidson, and tonight we begin a new season of the American Hockey League for the Hartford uh, Wolfpack and a chance to look at players who eventually, Rangers are hoping, will be on their team. I think, Sam, right off the top, we should mention that the American League is the top league other than the National Hockey League. This is where most teams have their young future stars playing. And tonight, the Rangers Farm Club, the Hartford Wolfpack, play the Philadelphia Farm Club, the Philadelphia Phantoms. And I think that in itself says something that should <laughs> be quite right. interesting. Now, we'll be looking at some players that some of you may be familiar with. One of them is someone who played with the Rangers part of last season. That's Joseph Ballet, who also played very well for the Wolfpack, John. Yeah, he played 17 games with the Rangers last season. There you see him taking a pass and beating uh, the Devils for a goal. He played, he played in the playoffs and had a great playoff here for the Hartford Wolfpack at the end of last season. He had 16 points in 16 games in the playoffs alone. He's a kid that came over from Montreal in the Alexei Kovalov deal, and the Rangers are hoping at 22 years of age, he'll be a player that you really look to for the future for scoring. Scoring, that's his big part, that's the strongest part of his game, scoring, and he also provides a little bit of excitement when he tries to score. All right, let's go from scoring to defense, and the Rangers have a couple of great defensive prospects, led by Fedor Tutin, who many know because he played a lot of games with the Rangers, and the other is Maxim Kondrachev, who came in the Brian Leach deal. Well, you can see they're both 21 years of age, they're about the same height, and the kicker here is that there are two players that have played together since they were kids over in Russia. They know each other very, very well. They've been paired together as a pair on the defense all the way through training camp, and I think that will be the go-to pair for this team. Kondratchev came over from Toronto in that Brian Leach trade. Fedor Tutin is maybe the number one prospect for the Rangers on the blue line, so it'll be, I think, interesting to see how the two of them work together. All right, Mr. Goalie, you know <laughs> what it's like to have a good yeah. season. How about the season Jason LaBarbera had last year? Uh, it was nothing short of sensational. He did just about all he could except for win the championship, and he was very close to doing that for Hartford. Like every award that was available for him to win, he basically took care of that stuff. 13 shutouts on the season. He's a big guy, Sam. He's 230 pounds, but he moves well side to side. He's had some good coaching. He's a quick learner. He's a player that uses his size well. And again, as this game moves along, we'll talk a lot during the game about the new rules for goaltenders, where you can go to handle the puck, where you can't go to handle the puck, and that'll be something interesting to watch. Jason LaBarbera, the question is, can he make that next step up to the NHL? In the American League, the great year last year, and they're expecting big things yeah, from him this year. The Rangers have about four really good, solid prospects regarding goaltending. Of course, Blackburn, you've got Lundqvist playing over in Sweden. You've got Montoya playing at Michigan, and of course, you have LaBarbera here. I don't think there's another team in hockey that has that much talent that are young kids that are looking uh, to move up and become the number one goaltender at the NHL level. All right, we get a good look at the future Rangers tonight as they take on the Philadelphia Phantoms. Before we get to that, we want to say a special yeah. goodbye because last week, all of us lost a very special friend, a big time New York Rangers fan, and an inspiration to everyone around the world, Christopher Reeve passed away. You know, Sam, it was sudden and it was, uh, it was something that shocked all of us because he, he's done so much for what he needed to do for his situation, being paralyzed. His family are huge, huge Ranger and hockey fans. So on behalf of Madison Square Garden Network and the Rangers, we'll say that we wish all the best to Dana and the family and stick with the hockey and keep going forward with what Chris was doing, as we certainly will. It was always special to see him at Madison Square yeah. Garden for the Super Skates competition and all he did to find a cure for paralysis. Go to the body here. Okay, yep. hey, good start out of your G. Betsy, let's go, boys. Come on. Not a bad start. Not a bad start here, boys. <laughs> All right, a little look inside the Hartford Wolfpack locker room. Head coach Ryan McGill, his third year. He's done a nice job along with Nick Fatiu. Yeah. Perry Pern, Rangers assistant coach, is helping out yeah. uh, with the Hartford Wolfpack. It was interesting. Coach McGill told us about an hour ago, I guess, that he felt his team was a little nervous. Yeah. So he didn't have too much of a pregame speech there. Simple and early, boys. Yeah, keep it simple. 
They're an aggressive forechecking club. They love to take the body. And uh, this is a very good hockey club with a lot of good young talent on it for the Hartford Wolfpack. And, of course, they face the Philadelphia Phantoms. Well, they went to the semifinals in the playoffs last year. Wilkes-Barre knocked them out. Jason LaBarbera, 24 years old, just had the magical season last year for the Wolfpack, setting a record for shutouts. The top goaltender in the American Hockey League and the league MVP. Man, that's saying a lot. And has played games for the New York Rangers. There is Fedor Tutin wearing number 55. And the entire Ranger organization with high hopes for him. Well, he's calm on the ice. We saw that a lot when he played with the Rangers last season as a defenseman. And he's also got a great disposition, Sam. He's relaxed. He's outgoing. He doesn't mind trying to learn to speak la the language of English. It's hard for the Russian kids when they're young to come over here and do that. But he's, uh, he's a terrific, outgoing, good young talent. Speaking of the Russian kids, 21-year-old Maxim Kondrachev is someone we'll look at. That is Bryce Lampman. He played some time with the New York Rangers last season. Spent his offseason in Minnesota. And hoping again this is someone that uh, all the Rangers scouting staff, Rangers coaching staff feels has a chance. There's Jed Ortmeyer. Didn't know him up till a couple of weeks ago that it would be okay to play in the American Hockey League. You usually have to have a certain number of games played in the AHL. That was waived because he played 58 games with the Rangers last season. But uh, he just wanted to play hockey, John. He, oh, he said, was a player's no, player. Play. Remember that last yeah. year? The fans voted him the player's player. That's a kid by the name of Betts who was moved in the Chris Simon deal from the Calgary Flames. He had a bad shoulder, had surgery during the offseason, and the Rangers are hoping that he'll be a guy, because he's certainly big and strong, that can become a winger playing for their organization in the future. He's healthy, that's the key. There's a look at head coach Ryan McGill, third year here in Hartford. He had a Memorial Cup championship, was in the championship of Canada, coaching the Kootenai Ice. The hometown is called Cranbrook, where that team plays out of in British Columbia. It's where Dan Blackburn played. And, uh, and to win that is a marvelous wow. achievement. It's interesting talking with him, John. It's almost as if he has this encyclopedia, this book in his mind of the players on the other team. He knows their tendencies yeah. so well and so familiar with them. There is longtime Hartford Wolfpack player and a uh, man who played with the Rangers for some time, Ken Junander. He's the captain and a real good man in the locker room. There's a special presentation going on uh, on the ice. And there is the captain, Ken Jernander, going over to accept the presentation. Cork Middle School and Hartford Public High School. The Hartford Wolfpack would like to present the Hartford with a plaque recognizing the Tickets for Tomorrow program as a valuable service to the community. Thank you. 750 tickets donated to some school children so they're able to come out and watch and I think seems to have gone over very very well here in Hartford. I think that's something that throughout the Rangers organization yeah. we see and it goes through the Wolfpack as well the involvement in the community is extensive. Ladies and gentlemen please rise as Randy Feierberg sings our national anthem. Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave all righty we're getting ready 
for some hockey. It's good to be doing some hockey, it John. Is, and it's live. <laughs> John, some rules that uh, are new to the American League and uh, actually a test run well, for maybe in the NHL down the road. Yeah, not automatic offsides anymore. If you leave the zone, you're allowed to go back in. So tagging up, automatic icing. You don't have to touch the puck behind the goal line. It's just automatic as soon as it goes over. The blue line, you'll notice it here. The center ice red line and the blue lines are twice as wide as they used to be, which means more room in all zones to make plays. Goalie pads are smaller than they used to be by a couple of inches. And the goaltenders themselves, Sam, are not allowed to handle a puck in behind the goal line unless it's in the area that you'll see marked off behind the goal nets. There they are, the two lines from the goal line to the backboard. If the puck's in there, you can go get it. There you see the areas, mm -hmm. including the goal crease. And also the goal line's been moved back a couple of feet, too. If you play it outside that zone, it's a two-minute two penalty, penalty for delay of the game. But as you reminded me, if you're outside that zone and reach in to get it, that's okay. As long Where as the, the puck, puck is. is inside the zone. That's correct. So that, it's going to be interesting to watch all this stuff. Goal lines have been moved back two feet, which means the blue line, Sam, have been moved back two feet from center ice. So what, what we're saying here is there's more room to make plays from the start of one blue line to the far end of the other blue line. Having a problem with the goal light behind uh, one of the goals. The Wolfpack play in the Atlantic Division of the Eastern Conference. The Phantoms play in the East Division. They play each other twice during the season. Last season, Wolfpack won here in a shutout. And they've tied in Philadelphia. And the Hartford Wolfpack and the Philadelphia Phantoms are underway. John Slaney playing it across. Yoni Pitkin and sending it in. LaBarbera steers it away. It's whistled down for an icing. Automatic. See, as soon as the puck is fired from one side of center ice and it goes over the goal line, it's automatic icing. Betts is a big kid. He's healthy. Watch him finish his check here. Bang. That's on Pitkin in a real fine young defenseman for the Flyer organization. Good hit by Betts early. Blair Betts is 24 years old. The Rangers, or the Wolfpack, pardon me, have a ton of face-off plays. They love face-offs in the other team's zone. Last year scored a ton of goals off face-offs. John Slaney, who's been playing ho professional hockey for 15 years, played with six NHL teams, including the Flyers. Into the Wolfpack zone. And Lawrence Nicolet able to move it out. Nicolet and Lampman paired on defense. Lawrence Nicolet, number 28, carrying the puck. Steered away. Antero Nidamaki, who played three games with the Flyers last season, is in goal. One of their other starting goaltenders, uh, Neil Little, suspended after a fracas in the uh, preseason game. Puck going all the way down, and again, the automatic icing. It's got to be interesting for the officials, too, as you look at Kondrechev, one of the defensemen for this club, came over from Toronto on the Brian Leach deal, paired with Feder Tuk. And Johnny has 30 days to make a decision whether he's going to stay here and play the entire season or go back and play in Russia. Well, I, I, my feeling is just a gut feeling that he'd stay here and play because he has a chance to play as a, as a partner, Feder Tutin. Mm. And the two of them know each other. They've grown up together. They played World Juniors together. And that's a big plus for him. There's only one factor, John. It's always about the money. <laughs> well... That's but a good point. yeah, you know, uh, it would be it's invaluable experience yeah. for him. Yeah, this is a great league. It's a smaller ice surface than Europe, but it would benefit him to play here. This is Jeff Hamilton hits the post. Wow. Hamilton who led the American League in goal scored, shoots and he stopped by Nidamaki. How's that for a first shift? Wow. Puck taken back by the Wolfpack. Boy, oh boy, Hamilton makes an impression with his first shift. Two scoring chances, one goal post. He's a free agent. He was a free agent, signed a Wolfpack contract. He was in the Islanders organization, playing at Bridgeport last season, led the American League in goals scored. He's a smart guy, too. Yeah. Yale. Yale. Yeah. <laughs> I assume that. There's a few of those around, yeah. John. <laughs> Murphy sends it in for Philadelphia. And the puck moved out of the zone. And we've got a penalty call, the slashing call against the Philadelphia Phantoms. Looks like Freddie Meyer, the defenseman, will go. And the first power play of the game goes to the Wolfpack. Look at Hamilton's speed to the outside. He beats a very good defenseman in Seidenberg, and he, I think, caught the goaltender 
Niedermacki not quite ready for the shot. That was a wrist shot from a long way out. And then there's a second chance. And boy, was that a great kick save with a left pad. Hamilton, who's not big in size, certainly shows, A, he knows what to do with the puck. He knows the offensive zone, and he's fast. The puck cleared all the way down. This is where it's tough on the goaltender, John, whether to go out and play the puck and when it's cleared well, down on, sure, on a power play situation. You see that play, that tip pass almost worked. That was a set play. Beautiful. Nicola playing it across to Ken Jernanders, playing the right point. Dominic Moore, number 17, is up front with Alexander Giroux, number 16. And Joseph Bale. Well, Bale not on the ice right now. And a little pushing and shoving. The two line pass, so the faceoff will be back in the Hartford zone. Yeah, for goaltender Sam, if the puck is iced down when the other team's on a penalty kill, you have to get to the puck before it crosses the goal line. If not, the defenseman has to come all the way back and right. get it. And, and you're trying to create offense. I think the rule is good where you can't go behind there and handle the puck unless it's in behind mm -hmm. that. that, that uh, I guess you, what would you call that? Just a zone. Zone. Yeah, behind the but net. But they should disengage that rule during power plays. Okay. Let the goaltender go anywhere and handle the puck during power plays only. I think it would make some sense and therefore create more offense for the team on the power play. Feder Tutin is on playing the left point. Kondrachev at the right point, and the Phantoms clear all the way down. You know, Freddie Meyer went for slashing at 156. Now, the Barber did it there. He went and got the puck before it went over the goal line. So he could go anywhere and handle the puck as long as it's in front of the goal line or directly mm -hmm. in behind his net. You can't go handle the puck in the corners. Kondrachev's pass went off the stick of Jeff Hamilton. I wonder if Marty Brodeur is watching. <laughs> he won't be happy watching that. No. Hamilton. Chad Wiseman is on now. And Joseph Bale. And Eric Malash sending it in. Malash number 22 with Peter White number 27. Oh, Malash is lucky that Feder Tutin didn't hit him at center ice. He could have knocked him in the next week. We're three and a half minutes in. There's no score in the game. And 22 seconds remain in the Wolfpack power play. Puck given away. Is sent in deep. Ballet was tied up along the boards and the puck cleared by Ben Stafford for Philadelphia. Final seconds of the power play. No score in the game. Teams are back at full strength as the Phantoms kill it off. No shots on goal on that power play for Hartford. No score in the game. And a good by Craig Weller, number 36 of the Wolfpack on Yoni Pitkinen. Pitkinen, who played 71 games for the Flyers last season. Brought across, long shot, his glove. Dominic Moore taking the wrist shot that was gloved by Nidamaki. There's Craig Weller, who had that, uh, that big hit earlier. He was a converted defenseman, Sam, to a forward. And when you're a defenseman, you learn how to hit. And as a forward, he knows how to, hand, or to take the body nicely. So there's LaBarbera who handled the puck on the proper side of the goal line. Now you see here, the Phantom goalie stay inside the zone, but he gave the puck away. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering about European goaltenders. They, they don't handle the puck much over in Europe because the ice surface is too big. So if this change continues, it won't hurt them that much. It will hurt more the North American goaltender who tends to wander and handle the puck much better. Puck centered for Malash, and he ran into Mc, Jeff McMillan and the puck was cleared down and there's some hitting going on oh, Bally boy. went in wound up for a shot but it's whistled down that was awfully close those big wide blue lines allows the zone to become a little bit bigger you know it, with the wide blue line Sam the end zones are bigger the zone between the blue line and the red lines bigger all the way up the ice that's two feet now the width of the blue line allowing and the center ice red line right and allowing for more. So there should be fewer two line passes mm -hmm. and more room to generate play. speed through the neutral zone. Now watch the puck go back. The linesman is right there against the far boards. The puck is coming back right in here and here comes Ballet. It's out. Great call by the linesman. Great call by the linesman. Another penalty to Philadelphia. So power play. Right, coming Malosh up, is and in Malosh the box. Malosh goes off. He had a late hit, if I saw it. Remember, that's the son of Jules Malosh, the former terrific NHL goaltender who played 
all over the place, including Pittsburgh. It started with, yeah. I think, if I remember correctly, the California Golden Seals. And Eric played a parts of two seasons with Pittsburgh, with Pittsburgh yeah. before going to Philadelphia. But he's had some time in the NHL. Actually, four years total, including the minor leagues with mm -hmm. the Pittsburgh organization. Signed with the Phantoms or the Philadelphia organization as a free agent. Kondratiev and Bale. Kondratiev and Tutin now playing the points. Up front is Bale with Hamilton and Wiseman. And the puck cleared all the way down. La Barbara steers it around to Kondratiev. Unsportsmanlike conduct, the penalty called to Eric Malash. The Damaki played it ahead. Tutin got there to keep it in the zone. Dennis Seidenberg firing it out. Seidenberg playing a couple of seasons with the Flyers. The last, couple, uh, last season played a few games, had uh, an injury that kept him out for most of last season. Previous season played over 50 games. Lane Ulmer comes in, a shot deflected up into the netting and play stops. Laney with a nice deflection on the Ulmer shot. He played 76 games, did Lane Ulmer with the Hartford Club last season. He's a, He's got great hands. Terrific scoring hands. You'll see the shot get deflected by Slaney, who's a veteran defenseman. You know, this is Philadelphia club. You think about Seidenberg and Pitkinen and Slaney. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good back there. Played toward the net by Nicklet. Deflected on the way in and kicked away with a right pad by Nidamaki. Side of the net. That shot went off the side of the net. Pitkinen able to move it up. And it's cleared all the way down. Good face-off win by the Hartford Club. It allowed them to get a chance or two. Ken Jernander around the boards. A strange carom and a good play by Nidamaki. Good reaction as it hit one of the metal stanchions going around the glass and caromed into the crease. Good backhand yeah. play by Nidamaki. Still 46 seconds to go on the minor penalty to the Phantoms. Watch this strange carom you were talking about, Sam. Puck is fired around. The goaltender thinks, uh oh, oh that was a good play. He grabbed that smartly. Put him on your baseball team, yeah. John. There's a wrist shot in, and I think it's always a good idea. That puck hit three different things on the way in a stick, a couple of feet, a couple of skates, and then a good save. Dito Mackey, the goaltender, looks all right, Sam. The very first shot of the game on him hit the crossbar. Mm -hmm. That was Hamilton. Right. Since then, he looks pretty good. Face-off win by Ulmer. Janander playing it in deep. Power play has 40 seconds remaining for Hartford. There's no score in the game. Behind the net. Ulmer centering, quick shot, saved in the back, he rebound, score! It may have been Alexander Giroux. Dominic Moore will wait. There was a crowd in front. You want me to say it? Yeah, yeah. come on, I want to hear it. It's a power play goal! It may be Dominic Moore. Moore. <laughs> it may be Moore who gets the goal. Puck is put in front. Right here. Shots taken. The rebound is there, and it's clipped in on the backhand. Before Moore was knocked down, he's able to score. He stays outside the crease, finds the puck, and just flips it up in the air over the goaltender. one nothing in favor of the Hartford Wolfpack. A power play goal. Mark Murphy sending it in. Out behind the net goes LaBarbera, puts it in the corner. And the puck cleared out. So the Wolfpack grabbed the lead with their second power play opportunity, cashing in. Puck sent around the boards. Trevor Gillies, number 51, is on. Hamilton fires it around. Moore gets the goal from Nicolet and Ulmer at 6-14, a power play goal. The Phantoms have yet to get a shot on goal. We're seven minutes into the game. And Hartford's had two power plays. That's one reason why the Phantoms haven't had much. But for LaBarbera, you know, your first game, you like to get a little work. He's handled the puck pretty well, but nothing from the other team yet. Better Tootin fires out. And Jed Ortmeyer plays it cross corner. Blair Betts. Dropping it back. Maxim Kondratiev shoots it wide around the boards and out it goes, and Tutin is there to play it. Kondratiev played a couple of games, I believe seven games with the Toronto Maple Leafs last season, so he's had a little touch of professional hockey in the NHL and played uh, in the American League as well. 
and Drachev with the puck. A lot of eyes on him because of the big move. Alexander Giroux came over from Ottawa, got tripped up by Freddie Meyer. Could have almost been another power play if Hartford keeps using speed like that to the outside. They're making the, fence, the defenseman turn. Nice setup, save made. Set up for ballet from Tutin. Tutin shot deflected into the corner. Penalty upcoming on Philadelphia oh. again. Wolfpack dominating play here with good speed and aggressiveness in the offensive zone. And the puck touched up. Another power play coming up with 11.36 to go in the first and the Wolfpack leading. Here's some of the Rangers' future. 55 is Feder Tootin, the defenseman. He sets up ballet. He's robbed, but look who goes and gets the puck again. It's Tootin with a shot that's stopped. And he's also on the ice now to start the power play. Just look at the, these, I don't know you call it, smart street smarts, whatever you want to call it, instincts. tootin has got it all. Another opportunity. Ballet's pass taken away by Peter White. Couldn't clear. It was blocked and kept in by Tootin. Played in deep. Chad Weisman, number 21, Jeff Hamilton, number 14, Joseph Ballet, number 57, up front for Hartford. This is Hamilton. Now Ballet. Tootin winds up and fires wide. Hamilton chases it down, checked by Yoni Pitkinen. Weisman shot deflected. Well, he had an open man right in front, that was Ballet. Tootin. Playing it across, one-timer goes wide by Kondratiev. Oh. Out in front comes through to Tutin. His shot just goes wide. Pretty organized team, Sam. This Hartford club, they look very, very organized, very confident. Hamilton took a hit. Bali moves it back, but missed connection with Tutin. LaBarbera comes out to play it right out to Kondratiev with a minute to go on the power play. 10.35 to go on the first. Hartford leading 1-0. And they regroup as they change up. Jernander comes on. To play the point. Dominic Moore has the puck now. Moore, Ulmer, and Giroux. Nice play by Meyer, the left defenseman, to stop the Hartford breakout. They've got set breakouts. This Hartford club, they use all kinds of different passes, different plays. You find out what works. If it works, you try it again. Nick Fatiu involved in some of oh, that. Yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. The whole, the whole organization, the coaching staff they're very well schooled Nicky's learned a lot over the years he's become a very good coach Randy yeah. Jones was able yeah, to clear for Philadelphia the young players like learning from him you know it's a perfect situation for him right now more for Giroux Giroux came over in the deal involving Greg DeVries going to Ottawa Puck taken back by Pitkin and turned it over. Moore takes a hit, gets knocked down from behind by Ryan Reddy. Reddy takes the puck, trying to lead Seidenberg, who's just out of the penalty box. That's an icing, and play stops with 9.29 to go. First period, and the Wolfpack with a 1-0 lead. We'll take a look at the right side. That was Ballet. He was over there, right-handed shot. He wanted to slam up the puck in, but he didn't get moved. There's a look at Nick Fatiu, former Ranger. 445 games as a New York Ranger for Nick Fitty. Look at the intensity on his face there. The Staten Island flash. He's still got it. Puck taken away by Boyd Kane, number 28, the captain of the Phantoms. Takes the outlet, tries to move it. Phantoms yet to get a shot on goal. Ten and a half minutes gone by in this first period. Good hit along the boards. And the puck cleared out of the zone. Martin Grenier, number 38, back on defense. Grenier also came over in the DeVries deal. Well, he held the blue line there, didn't back up, and with his size, he was able to take the body. Pretty big boy, Sam. Is Grenier, 6'6", around 250 pounds. That's a big boy. Mm -hmm. Chip out by Kane. You should mention, too, just a one-referee system here. Yeah, and it's Terry Koharski who is uh, the referee. And I want to correct myself. Grenier came over from Vancouver in, in the, the Ruchinsky, Ruchinsky deal. Right. That was also Umberger. R.J. Umberger. Who's playing His here for rights were acquired by the Rangers. He signed as a free agent with the Philadelphia Flyers and was playing with the Phantoms. Randy Jones. Playing it across to Dennis Seidenberg. 1-0. Wolfpack leading it. This is Mark Murphy, number 16 for Philadelphia. Took a hit. Randy Jones, the defenseman in deep. 
Puck cleared out nicely. Yamaki sends it out to Murphy. Just under eight minutes to go in the first period. And the Wolfpack with a 1 0 lead. And don't miss out on seeing your New York Knicks in action. For ticket information, call 877 NYK Hoop or visit NewYorkKnicks.com. The 2004 2005 New York Knicks all ball, and they look good today. They beat the Nets, too, the other night, right? Yeah, they're 2 0 in preseason. There, right? No. Oh, he didn't make that? I didn't make that game, but I watched. And they look good today, beating uh, San, Antonio. San Antonio at the Garden. Mark Crawford is very good. Hernander moves the puck. Penalty upcoming to the Hartford Club. An elbowing call against Jed Ortmeyer. So this will give the Phantoms a chance to get their first shot on goal. There's 7.37 to go in this first period. And they haven't had a sniff regarding nope. a scoring chance. Not even close. Well, maybe now they'll be able to get something towards Jason LaBarbera. Ortmeyer, we all know he hustles, but that time the referee said, elbow up, you're in the box. Ortmeyer elbowing at 12-23. Get a look at the Wolfpack penalty killing. Maxim Kondratyev and Fedor Tutin, and that is the lead pair. You're seeing them see get a lot of ice time. Chad Wiseman, number 21, couldn't clear. Peter White kept it in. White feeding Patrick Sharp, who had a good rookie season with the Flyers last year. Shot was blocked. Wiseman moves it over, and Dominic Moore sends it across. Here's Wiseman moving it on John Slaney. Slaney intercepts and moves it out. Slaney, a dangerous man on the power play, led all defensemen in goals scored in the American League last year with 19 and in power play goals by defensemen. 1990, whoa, here we go. Dominic Moore turned it the other way, moves in. Slaney is there, backhander deflected over the top. In 1990, Slaney was a first round draft pick of the Washington Capitals. Played with Washington, LA, Nashville, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and I missed one, John, but I'll uh, remember it. Come to me in a minute. Good. It's pretty good. 13 out of 14. <laughs> Randy Jones, number four for Philadelphia. Over to Pitkinen. Jeff McMillan, who played with Utah in the American League last year, signed as a free agent. It will clear it all the way down. Must be a sandbagger, too. He was on the winning team for the Hartford Golf Tournament the other day. They played it at the TPC course here in Hartford, Cromwell, Connecticut. McMillan's team was 10 under. Oh, it's got to be a sandbag. Oh, you're just sand angry because you came in third Whoa. instead of first. Well, Colorado was the other team that ah, Slaney gotcha. played for. Good Randy penalty Jones. kill here, Sam. Yep. 20 seconds to go on this power play, and it's just aggressive penalty kill all over the ice. Look at that. Whoa. Oh, good takeaway by Moore. Here comes Wiseman moving in. Save Nidamaki. Caught the Flyers on a change. Moore made a great play. Still no shots on goal for the Phantoms. 50, let's see, 14 25 gone by in the game. And the power play is over. Excellent penalty kill. Wolfpack with a real good start. Mark Murphy moves in. There's the shot on goal and the save off the left shoulder of Jason LaBarbera. That was a good shot and a good save. Bale with good speed gets to the puck, fires off the side of the net, has it back. He's moved between the legs, but the back pass comes out. David Prince, number three, on the fence, takes a hit from Bale. Meyer couldn't move it, centered in front, knocked down by Bale. Bale whacked out there wow. by Ben Eager, number 23. He's a little over eager there. Ben Stafford for the Phantoms. Tootin took a hit from Sharp. Patrick Sharp, good player. Here's a three on one for the Wolfpack, and it was missed by Lane Ulmer. Ulmer, number 18, dropping it back. Bale in deep. Giroux comes out of the corner. Blocked in front by Meyer. Boy, he clears the, it down. For the Phantoms, Eager went to throw a body check at the blue line, missed, kept going to the bench for a change. Wolfpack had a three on one, couldn't finish. Well, when you try to throw the body and you miss, it creates problems there. See how it missed? Now, wide open shot here by Ulmer, but he fanned on it. The three-on-one doesn't work. Moore on the penalty kill. Strips the puck and sets up Weisman for a partial break. He's got a great shot, but the goaltender was there to make the save. 
The good news for the Hartford Club, they're up one nothing. The bad news is they're only up one nothing. <laughs> they they should be up by more than one. They right. played that well. They've outshot Philadelphia ten to one. Shot toward the net. Save Nidamaki on the backhander. Blair Betts getting the shot off. And the puck cleared all the way down. The Barbara watches it go by. It's an icing. And again, if you're just joining us, icing automatic in the American Hockey League. No touch icing. Puck comes down, crosses the goal line, whistle blows. The primary reason for that is the, the fear of injury. When the players race back to see who can get to the puck first, and they don't have time to stop and they get hit, you see some serious injuries. Also here in the American League, we've already mentioned it, only one referee, not two like we see at the NHL level. And that's Terry Koharski, son of Don Koharski, longtime NHL referee. Seidenberg moves it. The American League has you dress 17 skaters and two goaltenders. There is talk uh, that they may increase that to 18 skaters. And that may that, there may be a vote on that very soon. I think it should go to 18 and 2, but it's not, you know, I'm not paying the salary. That's right. Nice pass from Betts to Ortmeyer. Save Nidabaki. Good pass. Puck sent in by Ryan Reddy. Ken Jernander is back for it. Greg Weller chasing after Pitkinen. Eric Malash bangs it off the glass. And Jeff McMillan able to clear for Hartford. Hartford club finisher checks well. This Philadelphia club I don't think is nearly as big with the lineup they have dressed in this game as are the Hartford club or Hartford players. Down through the years they've been known as a yeah. very physical which goes with Philadelphia and the Flyers organization but the Phantoms have been a very physical team. Nice play with a stick by LaBarbera. Well there's a lot of admiration from the Hartford side about the skill level of some of the Philadelphia players. But not quite as big as what we've seen in the past. Kane left the puck there. Moore took it away. Moore trying to fight his way through. Fans wanted a call. I don't know if that was uh, if the call was warranted yeah, there. If the Hartford club keeps working like this, mm -hmm. by the time the game's over, the power play should be seven or eight to like two. They, they've worked that hard. They're making Philadelphia reach out, trip, grab, pull. That's how dominant they've been so far for the first 17 and a half minutes here. Ryan McGill may have been worried that his team was nervous, but they've come out uh, playing very well in this first period. Yeah, but they've been nervous with the puck, I think, around the net of the offensive zone. And in other words, they haven't mm -hmm. finished with a three-on-one and things like that. Nice intercept by Wiseman. Defenseman fell down. Wiseman stopped by Nidamaki. There's another problem. <laughs> the Philadelphia Phantom goaltender, Nidamaki, has been very good. Yeah. That was some play. Boy, when you use your leg to stop the stick of the defenseman so you can move around him to make the play, that's using your head. Look at the battle here. Little flip play and boom, gone. Right there. Blind pass. Now watch the leg there. And then they'll try to go back through the legs of the goaltender, but a good save. Talk about a blind pass. Oh, man. Jones with a blind pass and picked off. And he should go back and give his goaltender a tap and say thanks. And Seidenberg with the embarrassing flop on the ice. He's had a rough first period. Dennis yeah, he'd been beat to the outside. He got caught turning there. Betts won the faceoff. Bali takes the shot, went off a leg wide. And is played by Ryan Reddy, number 14. David Prince moves it, and it's shipped out by Peter White. Peter White was up with Philadelphia a couple of years ago, played a full season with them. He's had NHL experience. Buck around through Jernander, took a hit from Patrick Sharp. Ballet moves it behind. Ballet looks like he's strong on his skates, doesn't he? Doesn't mm -hmm. get knocked over all that easy. I've seen players lean into him when he's had the puck. He's calm with it, and he, can, he seems to be able to take the, the bump from the other team's player without losing control of the puck. Here's a set breakout. See if it works. One pass, two passes, and it works. Betts carries in, drops it off to Bale. Bale looking for room. Shot blocked. Bale against Peter White. Now he's double teamed by Sharp and able to work it in. And Freddie Meyer for Philadelphia. One minute to go in the first period. Hartford Wolfpack leading. The Philadelphia Phantoms one to nothing and out shooting the Phantoms 13 to one. Uh, the one shot the Phantoms had was a good one. The Barbara took it off his left shoulder. I think it was Murphy that had the shot. Played ahead by Pitkinen and blocked. 
Moni Pitkinen, who was the fourth pick overall a couple of years ago in the NHL draft. Struggled early in the playoffs, John, then injuries hit the Flyers, yeah. and he had to go back in, and I thought played, settled down, played pretty well after, after that. Well, first time through, that should have been a penalty to the Wolfpack, as there was a little cross-check and a broken stick on the play. Slaney, the back pass going all the way back in the phantom zone. Pitkinen comes back to get it with 10 seconds remaining in the first period. The puck hit the referee at the red line. Wolfpack dump it back in, and that will do it for the first period. We'll be talking with Joseph Valle. He'll join us between periods. We'll also go to John Giannone at the MSG Sports Desk. He'll have a full recap of the day in sports and a lot going on. Football, baseball. The well, Hartford Club have to be satisfied with their effort, their body work, 13 shots on goal. But Barbara only had one, but he did make a good save. Handled the puck well, I thought. He's got to go in and either have some uh, Diet Cokes or some coffee to wake up. No, know. Sam, you take that. You never know what can happen the rest of the way. You just never just know. Why he's got to stay awake. That's He'll what be I mean. awake. He's a pro. Don't be worried about my man back there. Well, the go the goal to Dominic Moore on the rebound on the power play at 6:14. Nicola and Ulmer getting the assist, and Hartford out shooting the Phantoms 13 to one. End of one period in the season opener for the Hart Wolfpack. The Wolfpack leading the Phantoms one to nothing. We'll be right back. Back in Hartford, moments away from the start of the second period, the Hartford Wolfpack leading the. Philadelphia Phantoms one to nothing Dominic Moore with the goal a power play goal quality chances big edge to the Wolfpack they forced turnovers Nidamaki had to be really good on some shots power plays Wolfpack one for three Phantoms 0 for one the Phantoms only one shot on goal I think it's fair to say the Wolfpack the Hartford Club controlled all three zones they were quicker they took the body a lot and we'll see if this Philadelphia Club can find their game a little bit after getting through the first period only down by one goal. The fans are looking at uh, some prospects. One of the guys that is not here is Dan Blackburn, who is rehabbing uh, from surgery on his shoulder. This is all at the Rangers practice facility. He had surgery on the shoulder to take scar tissue away from a nerve that was being hindered. Most of the muscles in the shoulder, after not using it for nearly a year, have, have clicked back. And Sammy's been able to work hard. He's not there yet. He's also practiced hard when uh, training camp was held in New York up in Westchester County. And I think he'll start playing games if it keeps going according to plan around the holiday season, around Christmas. I think one of the things uh, hockey fans always ask us, John, where, whenever we see them, run into them, is what's going on with the lockout. Uh, what's, There's really what's no the news. Latest? There's no news to report other than both teams at this particular point in time aren't talking. One side, the ownership, wants a salary cap. The other side, the Players Association, say we don't want a salary cap. We'll negotiate other ways of getting to a, a resolution. So with that in mind, there's no common ground between the two sides, so they're not talking. And I think if they do start talking, if it does happen hypothetically in the near future, do it behind closed doors. Keep it quiet. You don't need a press conference every time you have some discussions. Go about your business and get it done so all of us who love the game can get back and be a part of it. And what's interesting is no matter who you talk to, whether it's fans or players at the minor league level, everyone is oh, impacted yeah. by it. Oh, oh, there's not only players and coaches and all their families and scouts, but there's collateral damage yeah. for people that are people that sell the hot dogs, people that make the hot dogs, people that truck the hot dogs. It goes on and on and on and on. But uh, it, it's. I'm just fearful, Sam, that it may get to something called an impasse, which would be late next summer, which means the whole season could be gone. And that means it's in the hands of labor lawyers, and who knows where it'll go then. Hopefully the two sides will find some common ground and get it taken care of. May I just say this? Mm -hmm. The NFL, a number of years ago, about 12 years ago, had a tough deal with their players. When they came 80, back... 87. Right. They came back, and today, with their collective bargain agreement... The, the players want a three-year extension. That's how much they get along, but they have trust. And if you don't have trust, you have nothing. They've got to find trust between the NHL players and the NHL owners somehow and then go forward. Underway second period, ballet around the net. Check there by Tony Vosch, number 15, who's a Philadelphia native. 
In deep lane, Ulmer took a hit. There's a penalty upcoming. A holding call. As referee Terry Koharski makes the call. It'll be in the offensive zone. You see Ulmer wrap his right arm around, and actually he was dragged down too, but Ulmer's going to the penalty box. Or ballet, I'm sorry, yes, I apologize. It was ballet. I, I sorry, my first. Well, give me two minutes, too. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, ballet put his right arm around. That's what the referee saw. But it was actually the Phantom player that pulled ballet down on top of him. So the call's made. And the Phantom, who have already had one power play in this game, did not register a shot during that power play, have a chance to tie it up. Ballet holding at 27 seconds. Boyd Kane, number 28, bringing it across. R.J. Umberger, who uh, skated with the Rangers and with the Wolfpack uh, after the Rangers acquired his right but did not sign. Signed with Philadelphia instead. This is his first real game since in two years since he played at Ohio State. He sat out a year Whole after year, he was yeah. drafted. He played a little bit with, uh, with Team USA and some of their people, but never really got into games, and they're hoping that he'll develop and move along here. The Rangers had a chance to sign him, but didn't feel the, the money was right. Went against it. He's a big kid out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, the Rangers had a practice with their team and decided it was just too much money at that particular point in time and just let him go. Mm -hmm. And with that, they got a, a, the opportunity to draft another player in the second round that came over in that Vancouver deal. Phantoms on the power play. Dennis Seidenberg and Randy Jones playing the points. Up front, Patrick Sharp, number nine. Ryan Reddy, number 14. And Peter White, number 27. White has gone in front. Hartford with Dominic Moore and Chad Wiseman. Better Tutin and Maxim Kondratia. Seidenberg to Jones. Pressure from Dominic Moore. Tutin. Puck popped in the air. Sharp trying to play it. Tutin pins him. Ryan Reddy swings it around to Peter White. White checked by Kondratiev. Shot blocked. Good play by Dominic Moore getting in the shooting lane. Moore has been good. Yes, he has. Real good. He had a great first period. His penalty kill, he's smart. He anticipates where the puck's going to go, and he intercepts a lot of plays. Puck was kept in on the line. Open man, sharp, missed the net. Centered, and it's smothered in the crease by LaBarbera recovering, going from one side to the other. But Sharp had the opportunity, but his one-timer went wide. Yeah, Patrick Sharp went back against the grain as LaBarbera was moving to his right. Sharp shot the puck back the other way. Watch. The other way. And, oh, but a good foot and a half wide. And LaBarbera, for a big man, seems to be in balance pretty well. Here's a look at Feder Tootin taking care of his part of the ice. Did a nice job. He seems like a player lifts his level up when it comes game time, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Yes, he does. 20 seconds to go on the power play. Early second period. Wolfpack with a 1-0 lead. Phantoms with a man advantage. Slaney sending it in. Driven off the boards. Now we have a stoppage oh. now. A stanchion fell out and down. In a concert here last night. And the ice surface here and the boards of glass put up. Usher was here. Usher was here, right. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> There's a hit against the backboards, and here comes a stanchion. Whoa. Oh, it did oh, it. Go to the back. Grenier. Grenier. I think for LaBarbera, knowing the ice surface here and knowing the stanchions, it's got to be an advantage for him. Well, it didn't take long to slip it back in. Oh, Another look at the rule changes, Sam, that are in place here. The tag-up rule, John, meaning offside, the player that's offside can come back, just has to touch the blue line. Yeah, Doesn't have to come right. all the way out. That's just right. Touch and the then, blue line. then he can turn around and go back in, right. and then the linesman don't have to automatically blow the whistle for the offside, which is good. Automatic icing to try and stop injury with players racing back. As soon as it goes over the goal line, the whistle sounds. The blue line and the red line, the center ice red line, have been doubled in width. And the person that told me to do that originally four years ago was yeah. James Patrick. Really? In Buffalo. I said, you know what you got to do? Double the width of the lines. It makes more room. So you have fewer two-line passes. Goalie pads. And we, that that's, that doesn't inches. look like it's a big deal, does it? It doesn't seem they that way. They don't even look no. different down there. <laughs> they don't look 10 inches, but I guess they are. The youngster's got the autographs already. 
Flyers, oh, the Phantoms boy. bench, and the former Flyer Craig Berube assisting John Stevens, who's the head coach. And John has been uh, yeah. head coach for the Phantoms. This is his fifth year. The other assistant coach is former Ranger Shell Samuelson. Well, oh, Craig Berube and Nick Fatio. Mm. Maybe between periods we get. <laughs> Whoa. Kidding. They're both great guys, but were they tough? Tough, tough, tough. Power play over. One shot on goal on the power play. Martin Grenier playing it for Hartford. We're early second period. The Wolfpack with a 1 0 lead on a power play goal by Dominic Moore. Bale gives up the puck, then pokes it ahead to Wardmeyer. Bale is taken out, so is the linesman. Giroud kept oh, it in, oh. got hooked down by Meyer. Meyer got clipped in the face. There's a penalty upcoming on Philadelphia. The late penalty, extra man on for Hartford. McMillan. Lampman moving it ahead. And we whistle down. The power, power play. Side. Power play for the Wolfpack. I think it was, Sam, I believe it was Giroux that got clipped. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. Here's Ballet. He's going to get bumped once, twice, and finally goes down, takes out the linesman. And then you're going to see Giroux come in from behind and grab the puck. And as he goes, he got clipped up high. Yeah, that's it. So Freddie Meyer goes to the penalty box for the second time in this game. Oh, maybe it's oh, not him. Eager? Yes, it's 23. It's I apologize. Eager. I did not see it then. Meyer was on one side. Right. Eager was on the other. That's been Eager's stick that came up and got him then. Eager for hooking. 3-11. Hartford's fourth power play of the game. Dominic Moore moves across with Lane Ulmer, Ken Jernander, Alexander Giroux. Giroux in front just missed the pass. And it comes out of the zone. Rice, no, Lawrence Nicolet is playing one point. Jernander to Nicolet. And it's cleared back by the Phantoms. Good pressure. It's Malash, good skating yes. there. Good play by Eric Malash. Get knocked down the puck. Taken back by Lane Ulmer. Here's Giroux moving in, deflected toward the net, smothered with a glove by Nidamaki. Set up a face off, and again, this Hartford club really try to find offense in tight games by winning face offs. So we'll see what happens. Now, the staff told us that if, if everything goes according to plan, then Moore, who you're looking at there, should be their best face off guy. However, their team's making a change here. And we'll see what they do with center ice on this. Upcoming face-off. Moore's had a good, strong game. Penalty kill, power play. You know what? With fewer players on your roster, you have players do more things. Right. They kill penalties and work power play and check and everything else. Oh. Chad Wiseman is chased. In comes Jeff Hamilton. Hamilton tried to go forward with it. Jones gave it away to Wiseman. Here's Hamilton coming out. Hamilton, Ballet, and Wiseman. Three good offensive players up front for Hartford. Tutin and Kondratiev play the points. Ballet's pass blocked by Randy Jones. Jones and Seidenberg with Sharp and Ben Stafford. Jones fell down, then blocks the pass. Seidenberg able to move it out. 40 seconds to go on the Hartford power play. Kondratiev moves it to Ballet. Kane missed it. Ballet. And it's deflected out. Bale put up terrific numbers in the playoffs for the Wolfpack. It's 16 points in 16 playoff games. A dump in hit. Wiseman. Wiseman recovers. Eight seconds to go on the power play. Wiseman plays it across. Intercepted and cleared by Slaney. Power play is over. And Hartford one for four on the power play. They had one shot on goal on that power play opportunity. Shots are 14 to one. Originally a shot that was credited to Philadelphia on their power play was taken down. Oh boy, Eager. Eager with a check deep in the Hartford zone. He draws attention. In fact, one of the Hartford players broke a stick as he gave him a little cross check and it was not called. Puck chipped out of the zone. And a big collision in center. As Umberger ran into Kondratiev. 
It was Kondratiev that got hit earlier, Sam. So he's been bumped a couple of times here. Murphy has it stolen by Moore. Good setup in front by Weller, and it's knocked away. Back pass, played down low, saved by Nidamaki on the deflection by Moore. Lampman gave it up. So good job on the forecheck by the Wolfpack to force some turnovers and created some offensive chances. But Nidamaki with a terrific game. There is Umberger moving in. Passes behind Malaj. He recovers, centers, and the Wolfpack there to take it away, move it out. Hortmeyer goes cross ice to Jernander. Heading to the net. That save by Nidamaki. Blair Betts with a puck. All three forwards with long passes. Nice plays. Good transition there by the Wolfpack. Wolfpack out shooting the Phantom 16 to 1, but still, as John said, it's only 1 0. And Philadelphia can thank Antero Nidamaki from Finland. The goalie's been outstanding. Play is whistled down with 13.05 to go in the second. For Philadelphia, it's Mark Murphy took the puck back into his own zone and gave it away. And there's a good play in front. But of course, the goaltender was there. Here's some hustle to the net. Three way passing play. Another save by Nidamaki. Kondratiev got nailed, the Rangers' young defenseman. But he gives it back. Boom, with a big hard hit there on Umberger, who's a big guy. Lawrence Nicola took a penalty, and the Wolfpack are shorthanded. Third power play of the game for the Phantoms. And puck sent in and whistled down. Automatic icing. Icing as they did not gain the red line. Nicola for cross checking at 655. And the Phantoms still with only one shot on goal, and that was not on the power play. So they haven't had a shot on goal on two power play opportunities. There's Fetter Tutin who plays in all situations. 25 games last year, and the key is when you play for your farm team as a major prospect is to play a lot. And he'll, he'll play a 25, 30 minute mm -hmm. game here, maybe even more if, if it goes into overtime. And then what, have, what happens if it's tied after overtime? Oh, after a five minute overtime, if it's still tied, they have a shootout, a five man shootout. Uh, the players don't love it, but the fans do. <laughs> yeah. and the Are you fans talking about goaltenders? The goaltenders and, the, you know, even the players. Some of the players were saying during the, you know, we went to, uh, John and I went to a charity tournament involving the Wolfpack, and players were saying then they uh, don't really care for it, that, uh, you know, you play so hard and then to have the game end in a shootout, it'd be uh, like seeing an extra inning baseball game end in a home run hitting contest, so. Here's Mark Murphy for the Phantoms on the power play. Stopped by Jeff McMillan. A Seidenberg shot. Good save by LaBarbera. Good shot by Seidenberg. Good save. Here's Weisman with a takeaway. He's done that a lot tonight. Moving in on Seidenberg. Weisman. Pass across. Shot by McMillan. Gloved by Nidamaki. Drops it off to Randy Jones. 38 seconds to go on the Phantoms power play. With Hartford leading 1-0. Clearing attempt was blocked, then it's sent out. Here's Dominic Moore with a puck. John Slaney is back for Philadelphia. Nice pass, shot by McMillan, deflected by Umberger up into the netting. Umberger, when he's on the back check, you have to pick somebody up, and he didn't, and his man was McMillan, was wide open. The shot never got onto the, to the net, but Umberger, now watch Umberger in front here. When the shot is taken, there you're going to see a rebound. Umberger will be in front, 20, there he comes. Now watch his stick get smacked, and he loses it, see? So he's trying to build his, his actual game timing and strength up. That time with one little slash, the stick was knocked out of his hands. Phantoms control. Slaney pass across. Ben Stafford, number 25. Boyd Kane playing it back. Shot by Pitkin and was blocked. Slaney's pass blocked again. Power play is over. Philadelphia 0 for 3 on the power play. They had one shot on goal on that one. They have only two shots for the game, and we played 29 minutes. Boyd Kane moves in. Fires. Stick save. LaBarbera up into the net. It goes. 10.51 remaining. Second period after the whistle. Some pushing and shoving. Big crowd in the corner. Maybe the first scrum we've had in the game, Sam, after a whistle. There's a shot to the the jaw of Boyd Kane. I don't know if the referee Kaharski will call anything here or not, but this is the first after whistle scrum I think we've seen in the game. 
And by the way, you see Gratton there. That is a cousin of Chris Gratton, who plays for the National Hockey League. If there is a National Hockey League. There better be. Yes. Thursday night on MSG. Don't miss the premiere of Rangers Classics presented by Panasonic. We take you back to January of 1994. Mark Messier and the Rangers battling the L.A. Kings. An overtime thriller. I hope you stayed up late that Isn't night. There a penalty shot there? Yes, sir. 8 p.m. Eastern time. We are on Eastern time. If you're watching us on the satellite on MSG Network. Did Tony Amonti have a penalty shot in that game? I think there was everything in that game. In overtime, in overtime. he had a penalty shot. One nothing Phantoms trailing the Hartford Wolfpack. The Wolfpack goal, a power play goal by Dominic Moore. 10-25 to go, second period. Lampman try to get it to Lane Almer. I was just reminded about your call in that classic game. Uh-oh. Ripley, gonna... believe it or not, Buck <laughs> is where that game belongs. Drop pass from Meyer to Bosch. Ooh, save made by LaBarbera. Centered and blocked by LaBarbera at the post. This kid Bosch, number 15, Sam, you mentioned he's from Philadelphia. He had gone to the locker room and missed five or six minutes of action. He comes back, and that was a terrific shot. It was low to the catching glove side. As you see the defenseman Meyer in on the play, there was a good save. Low to the catching glove side, kicked out by the left skate of LaBarbera. A wrist shot, a good wrist shot through traffic. And the defenseman, Freddie Meyer, went to the net as he helped set it up, went to the net, no rebound. And right now, Philadelphia finding their game a little They're bit. In fact, they've outshot. No, so they've been outshot just 4-3, and they haven't given up as much here in the second period, Sam. Mark Meyer, under pressure, was able to move it. Kondratiev outlet to Janander, then it's taken back. Brought across by Tutin with a big drive and a glove save by Nidabaki, and he holds it. 9.56 remaining. Second period in Hartford, the Wolfpack lead the Phantoms. We have post-game coverage after the American League Championship Series Game 3 in Boston. Yankees and Red Sox. Steve Cangelosi is in Boston for us. John Gino and Fran Healy and Keith Hernandez in the MSG studio will break down the entire game. So stay with MSG Network for post-game coverage of the American League Championship Series. Patrick Sharp makes his way out of the zone. And the puck deep in the Wolfpack zone. Kondratiev pressured by Peter White. Stopped by Randy Jones for Philadelphia. Long shot. Save LaBarbera. Another shot goes high. Phantoms coming on. You're right, John. Now they're picking up their game. They've had the edge of play. Oh, Ooh, flying baby. across. That's going to be a penalty. I think it was Ortmeier who came flying across. And it could be an even up penalty, too. You think so? The Phantom well, player was hit from behind. Yeah, there certainly was a first penalty going to the Rangers. There's no doubt about that at all, Sam. Hortmeyer's going to get the initial. And that'll be his second penalty of the game. I think the player he hit either didn't have the puck or had gotten rid of the puck. And then when he was down, he got hit. And it looks like Jeff, uh, pardon me, Make that ready for Philadelphia is going to the box okay. too for the retaliation. It definitely would have been a Philadelphia power play. Well, yeah, you see the player turn around, so there was a hit from behind. That was the defenseman Jones, and then there's the secondary play. Yeah. And you can see Reddy trying to put uh, Ortmeyer's head into the ice surface. See the player Jones didn't get the puck, he turned. I don't think that was an attempt to hit from behind, but the player turned on the play, and it ended up being a hit from behind. Jones, the, the Philadelphia player, didn't get the puck. So it's it's a call. And then when his teammate came across, that's ready. He gets the penalty for retaliation. Two minutes each for roughing. Ortmeier gets roughing. Ready roughing at 10.35. So the teams will skate four aside for the next two minutes. one nothing Hartford leading it. But the Phantoms have had the edge in play the last uh, four or five minutes, I would say. And LaBarbera... He's faced some good shots. Yeah, pretty common there, though, isn't he? He's done a good job. Nenemaki has been brilliant for Philadelphia. He's kept them in the game. Skating for a side. This is Dominic Moore. Now Fetter Tutin. Wide around the boards it goes. Kondratiev gets over. Off the corner boards, Tutin plays it. Now it's Moore. And Hamilton gets knocked down from behind. And is brought out by John Slaney. 
Good pass. Tony Vosch offside is whistled against Philadelphia. You know, I saw Tootin near the blue line, Sam, drop the puck down to the hash marks, in other words, along the boards, and then he went towards the net without the puck. He was hooked, he was held, he was, you know, stick through the legs, everything. To me, the plays away from the puck, they've got to make the calls on those. This is Tootin with a, with a play here. And he's just a smart player. I really enjoy watching him play the game. Well, supposedly what's in the book, John, and what uh, they would like to see called in the American League anyway, is that if you have a body length advantage on a player, even yeah. if you're with the puck, and a hook or a yeah. hold comes, but then that should be penalized as well. Oh, there's a, there's a hit. hit. Wow. That sent Nikola down. The point that I'm getting to is the players without the puck. Ooh, there was a trip on Umberger as the stick got caught up in his skate. Wiseman stick knocked away, recovered by Lampman. Go the ahead. Players John. without the puck. If they're held and hooked, they'll never get open. Right. And if they don't have the puck, they can't and shouldn't be hooked and held. We had a, a forum or a conference this summer in New York City with a bunch of different people, and that was one of the major comments to try to improve the game. Umberger one on one with Nicola. Wiseman Ooh, was nice checking. Play was checking Freddie Meyer. Meyer with a good effort and the save made. Freddie Meyer, he's trying to take control here, make things happen offensively from the defense position for the Phantoms. John Stevens, the head coach of the Phantoms, was telling us uh, earlier today that Freddie Meyer's really elevated his game. A lot of people last year didn't think he was NHL caliber. Now they do. Well, you think of their defensemen. We mentioned three of them earlier. Pitkinen and Seidenberg and Slaney. You don't mention Meyer, but when you watch this game here, Meyer may have, he may to this point be their best defenseman that I've seen here. Meyer's out of Boston University, New Hampshire born. Another look at the play where Umberger made a nice little pass in front, and there's Meyer, who was being checked closely, still found a way on the backhand to get the shot. Look at this hit, Sam. Oh, baby. That was a good hard hit. On Nicolette, knocked him down. Teams are back at full strength. 7-13 to go, second period. Wolfpack one, Phantoms nothing. Weller and Gratton are jostling for position. And the Wolfpack controlling. Nolan moved it to Weller, and Weller sending it in. And the puck covered by Nidamaki. Got a little snow shower. To mention for the Rangers, this being their farm club here in Hartford, if you're wondering where some of the players are, Jamie Lundmark, for instance, is playing in Italy right now. All right. Kind of interesting. Darius Kasparaitis, not a young player, but he wants to go play in Russia without insurance. I think he's nuts. Wow. Absolutely nuts. Something serious happens and he has an injury where he can't play anymore. He forfeits his salary when the league comes back to play. Yager playing in the Russian league? Uh, no, the Czech league. Czech league? And leading it in scoring. Okay. You talked about maybe playing in the Russian League. With, uh, yeah, I think he's playing in the Czech League. Okay. Right. I'm a little foggy, but I think that's right. And he's leading the league in scoring last I checked. And there are a lot of young prospects that are have been working out and were in camp with the uh, Wolfpack that will be going to Charlotte, which is the yeah. next level down, but will get playing time. And these are players that uh, eventually uh, the Rangers have high hopes for, like Lee Filardo right. and, and David Lifferton. Garth Murray, who the Ranger fans know of, played with the Rangers a lot last season, has, is out with a broken thumb. Yeah, he had surgery, had the bone pinned in there, and uh, Dr. Posner in New York City did the surgery. And the outlook looks very good. Here's Ortmeier moving in, dropped it to Jernander, his shot went wide. Blair Bett steps up, took a hit. Ortmeier goes down, puck taken away. Tootin shot, club saved in a Mackey. Tootin stepping in, good anticipation. Best player on the ice. There's a look at the best player on the ice, in my opinion. It's Feder Tootin reading plays. A quick shot, a nice little calm save by Nidamaki, the goaltender. Scramble in front, Nidamaki trying to stop play, and finally does. <laughs> wow. He, I mean, everybody was jamming and jamming and slamming and jamming, trying to find the puck. Right away, the Phantom coaching staff said, that's enough time for a change. Face-off play. Look at the battle there. Betts made that all happen, Sam. He had one hand on his stick. The other hand, uh, he, he, he was being held off. 
But he did a great job of finding a way to get the puck to the net, and then he was started to try to find the loose puck. Number 19, Betts came over in the Chris Simon deal with the Calgary Flames. And is finally healthy. That's the most important thing. One time second round draft pick of the Calgary Flames. Blair Betts will be uh, our guest following the end of the second period. And also the Wolfpack general manager. Oh, that deflected on goal and a good play by LaBarbera. Jim Schoenfeld, the general manager of the Wolfpack, will join us between periods. Thing about Betts when he was injured and had the shoulder operation, the Rangers flew him to New York a couple of times to have his shoulder checked. And they were very happy with how it improved. And you can see through camp here and into the beginning of the season, he looks pretty healthy. Another player who will see in Hartford will see action, but is injured now is a defenseman who played the at the end of the season with the Rangers, Thomas Polk. He's got a stomach muscle problem. Ooh. Patrick Sharp missed the net with that shot. Reddy gets it to Peter White. White checked there by Betts. Put out in front, taken away by Jernander for Hartford. In deep Blair Betts. Puck is kept in by Lawrence Nicola. And the Phantoms unable to move it out. Good job momentarily. And then it's played across to Bryce Lampman. Lampman fires in. 1-0 Hartford, 4.40 remaining in the second period. McMillan and Reddy go back after the puck. And Twistle down for uh, two That actually pass. hit that, hit the Philadelphia defenseman's stick before it got to the Hartford stick, but the linesman didn't quite see it. Monday afternoon, take a look back at 125 years of magical memories at the Garden on the exclusive documentary, The World's Most Famous Arena and How It Got That Way, presented by Argent Mortgage. Monday afternoon at 2 on MSG Network. Tony Bosch. Bosch out of Boston College. Ben Stratton with a shot. Club oh. saved through traffic. That is, to me, is an amazing save. That went through two players. There we go. Gloves dropped. And our first scrap. Ooh. Martin Grenier and Josh Gratton. Grenier threw a couple of lefts, and Gratton lost his helmet on the as a result. What a save by La Barbara, Sam. You absolutely right. Look at Grenier. Looks like he's got this totally under control here. He's much bigger. And ouch. Oh, well, Gratton comes back with one. Grenier goes 6-6, six, six, 258. Another oh, yeah. And he's totally in control here. And if it gets to be one-sided, the officials should jump in and take care of it. What a save by La Barbara. That Vos kid you mentioned at BC, he was their MVP twice at Boston College. He knows what to do in the offensive zone. And La Barbara made a catching glove save through traffic. That was really something. First fight of the season for both of these clubs. Watch this save through traffic coming up right now. Mm. Catching glove save, beautiful. And then Grenier met up with Grattan, who was in front. Grenier bigger, as you see. Mm. And then he changes hands and goes with a couple of lefts. One, two, and that was the end of the helmet. Three and four. Grattan actually hung in there. He's not, yeah. not nearly as big. Yeah, I mean, he's got decent size yeah. at 6'2", 215, but <laughs> Grenier's a giant. And you know some of the young players we talked about. There's some good size back there, John. That David Lifferton is a is a big kid. Uh, Tutin and Kondrachev have good size. So it'll be very interesting. That shot is stopped by La Barbara. La Barbara, very calm. Had very little work through the first 30 minutes of this game. The last eight or nine or ten minutes, he's had a lot more work. The puck took a funny bounce again off the glass end. You see that? It should have been around. Instead, it dropped right down. And there was LaBarbera down there waiting for the wraparound, using his big size down low. It makes a calm save. Look at LaBarbera. Just watch him go down. There it comes. Puck comes right to him. He doesn't go fishing for it. He waits for it to come to him. Rangers have a goaltending coach by the name of Ben Waller. He's been working with everybody in the organization. Things have gone well. Puck went up over the glass into the crowd. Gratton and Grenier, by the way, got five minutes each for fighting at 15:44. 4:05 remaining 
in the second period with the Wolfpack leading the Phantoms one to nothing. Another young player that uh, haven't mentioned was Jake Taylor is a collegiate player out of Minnesota right. Yep. Good good solid defenseman. Another big kid and young automatic icing you know the, the, we we're mentioning Ranger prospects. There's a goaltender by the name of Lundqvist playing in Sweden in a number one league first seven games of the season seven goals against. They're checking to see if that's one of the best starts ever for a Swedish goaltender to start their season and uh, I'm telling you he could be as much as anybody else a part of the Rangers future and goal. And if all these kids like Montoya and Lundqvist and the Barber continues and, right. and Blackburn they can't all play for the Rangers. Well, that gives you trade opportunities mm -hmm. down the run down the line. Chad Weissman missed the net on the off wing shot. Moore lost control. Brought in by Umberger. Save LaBarbera. And it's cleared out. Umberger finding his game a little bit in the second period. Slaney hounded by Hamilton. That puck was just outside. Offside whistle after the whistle pushing and shoving. There we go. And things starting to heat up between these two Looks teams. Looks like a Philadelphia New York <laughs> game, doesn't it? Boy, this is the Phantoms and the Hartford Wolfpack. They meet only two times. This year one time at each city once in Hartford once in Philadelphia in the last season the Hartford Philadelphia teams tied 3 3 and the other one was a shutout in favor of Hartford. There's more just as you see him back check then he'll go the other way. This is the end of the play as he was surrounded a bit and then as that was yeah. happening there was another battle over to the side and more anticipates well he's in the intercepted and made a lot of good plays. Looks like a power play. Penalty called on the Wolfpack. That's Weisman in the penalty box, Sam, I think. No. Yep. That was the secondary uh, uh, altercation that happened over away from where Moore was. And I guess Weisman must have started it or at least did something, so he's in the box. Roughing the call at 16 33 gives the Phantoms their fourth power play of the game. 0 for 3 with only one shot on goal. Wolfpack holding a 1 0 lead on a power play goal by Dominic Moore at 6 14 of the first period. Randy Jones for Philadelphia. Sent in by Peter White. White ready and sharp up front with Seidenberg and Jones for the Phantoms power play. And you saw the goaltender before the puck reached the goal line. The Damaki went out to stop it, give it to his defenseman. He can play it before it gets to the goal line or within the zone that's marked off behind the net. Jones outlets to Mark Murphy. Patrick Sharp after it. Checked by Bryce Lampman. Nicola try to move it. Rangers have Jed Ortmeyer. With Joseph Ballet, Lawrence Nicollet, and Bryce Lampman. Did I say Rangers? The Wolfpack. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Seidenberg with a shot. Good save. There's a rebound. It's still loose. The barber trying to stop it. He does. And the pushing and shoving after the whistle around the crease. But a good job by La Barbara to stop play. Shots are now 10 8 in favor of Philadelphia here in the second period. Still 55 seconds to go on this power play for the Phantoms. And La Barbara here is first rebound save of the game, I think. First shot got through, drops down, and he reaches out and got the stick and blocker there. And then he was able to corral a puck into him. He doesn't waste much energy for a big guy, does he, Sam? There's no. a good save. He battles to find it, reaches out, and pulls it in. That, he's, he's very calm, uses his size well, is not off balance at all. In fact, looks flat out confident. Shot. By Pitkinen was blocked. Pitkinen at the left point for Philadelphia toward the net. Got through. And LaBarbera there. That was a good play by Pitkinen. His first shot was blocked nicely. But then he retrieved the puck and used a wrist shot the second time. And it did get through. And LaBarbera finding the puck through traffic really well. Pitkinen's supposed to have one great bomb of a shot, Sam. There's the wrist shot. See that? Went right through the legs of White on the way to the net. Or both make that. I'm sorry, both. He's around the net a lot. Yep. Umberger on now with Malash and Kane. Pitkinen and Slaney. Puck taken away and Jernander drives it into the corner. Pitkinen out behind the net. 
Leaves it for Seiden for Pit Pitkin and taking it from Nidamaki. And Slaney moving it in. Into the player's box the puck went. Still 28 seconds to go on the minor penalty to the Hartford Wolfpacks Weissman. There he is, hey, Seaweed, remember? <laughs> trying to go around him when he was a Rangers defenseman. Oh, man. Big Shell Samuelson. It was like trying to swim through seaweed. Rangers traded him to Philadelphia. He really uh, had an outstanding well, career in the NHL. 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, 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 Plus skates. Yeah. But you, you see others in the league that are that big now. Before, oh, yeah. he was like, man, look at this. He stood out. Big, big, big guy. Yeah, now there's others. It's almost not commonplace, but it's uh, not uncommon. Let's put it that way. Great guy. He he became a defenseman that was really tough to play against, yeah. John. Oh, yeah. With the arms and the legs and the, st the long stick. Tootin moving it. Good play by Seidenberg to keep it in for Philadelphia. Tootin tries again, and it's blocked. Tootin moves it one more time. Went off of Moore and is covered by LaBarbera. Penalty is over after the whistle. Another get-together. That last clearing play by Tootin was through the middle. <laughs> not, <laughs> oh, not good. Maybe. And the puck caromed around, ended up, you see he was checked there, kept in pretty well by Seidenberg. Puck put deep. Tootin with the puck, see, went through the middle. And with a puck glancing off of Moore, went right back to the goaltender and forces another face off. A minute 26 remaining in the second period. Hartford maintaining a 1-0 lead. LaBarbera has faced 12 shots in this second period after facing only one in the first. Hartford a 1-0 lead. Teams with full strength. Philadelphia now 0 for 4 on the power play. They had two shots on goal in the last one. Ben Stafford for the Phantoms. Around the Mark Murphy. Blocked by Jeff Hamilton. Hamilton number 14 on with Dominic Moore and Chad Wiseman for Hartford. The puck sent all the way down. You know, it's an icing. Hartford's missing a player at their bench, Sam. I don't know who it is. Just trying to figure it out. It... I think the defenseman is might there. be a defenseman. And let's see. Oh, the Grenier gets sent to the uh, Grenier got sent to the uh, right. to the players. For the locker fight. room because yeah. of the fighting me. That's why there's a player missing. You got it. My apologies. No, oh, but you were right. There was a player missing from the bench. Long shot goes high off the glass. Last nice shot taken by Ballet off the face-off win. Under a minute to go, second period. Three on two. Puck centered for Umberger by Malash. Checked there by Nicolas. Malash sending it wide and into the corner. Pitkin and steps up to play it. Pitkin and carries. Center save made by LaBarbera. It looked like a deflection in front. Penalty upcoming. A hooking call, and it's going to be against the Wolfpack. Yeah, the, the Philadelphia club here getting quicker and quicker as the game moves along. They're not a team that you think has a ton of brawn, but they've got some quickness, and you see it starting to show itself here as the game marches along. There's only 33.1 seconds to go in this second period, and there will be a hooking penalty called. The barber had to make a good save yeah, on that. A nice little deflection, little deflection in front. And I think it's Lane Ulmer who's gone to the penalty yes. box. It'll be a hook right in front, right there into the hip. So the Phantoms get another chance as Lane Ulmer is called for hooking at 19:26. One nothing Hartford leading it. Betts got tossed out of the circle, so Jernander wins the draw, and it's quickly cleared by Kondratia. Jernander, Betts. Kondratiev and McMillan for Hartford. Jeff McMillan. Peter White. Ryan Reddy is checked by Jernander. Patrick Sharp is on for Philadelphia. McMillan pushes it out of the zone with a glove. Good effort by Jeff McMillan. Signed as a free agent by the Hartford team after playing with Utah last season. Period is over. Power play carries over into the third. The goaltending of Jason LaBarbera. Outstanding in the second you don't period. don't worry about LaBarbera. <laughs> He's a very calm pro in there. He only had one shot in the first period. Had 12 in the second. Some very good ones. As the Philadelphia team played much, much better. And earned themselves some power plays. In fact, when the third period starts, they'll have 127. One minute, 27 seconds to go on a power play. We'll talk to another Rangers prospect, Blair Betts, between periods. The general manager of the Hartford Wolfpack, Jim Schoenfeld, 
will join us as well. And we've also got an update from the MSG Sports Desk with John Giannone coming up. So stay with us for that. End of two periods. The Hartford Wolfpack have a 1-0 lead on the Philadelphia Phantoms. Next Saturday night on FSN New York. Catch more Future Blue in action as the Wolfpack visit the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, the New York Islanders farm team. Game time is 7 p.m. next Saturday night on FSN that's, New York. That's officially a rivalry, by the way. Yes, sir. Yes, a good one. <laughs> it just carries on, John. Yes, it, has it does. To. And uh, Jeff Hamilton, who played with Bridgeport next last season, now with the Wolfpack. So that'll be. Uh, he had 43 goals for them yes, last year. Yes, he did. Is that what he it was? An outstanding wow. season. So that'll be uh, a factor in that game next Saturday night as you watch the future blue. And a lot of uh, outstanding Ranger prospects. A good crowd here on opening night. The AHL season began Wednesday night. A couple of teams have already played two games. The Wolfpack with a strange schedule play tonight. Don't play again until next Friday night. And then uh, then they start to get into the action. Sometimes teams will play no games in uh, the middle of the week and then play three games on the weekend. weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, Blair Betts is going to be joining us any moment. <laughs> As the youngsters are watching pucks being fired out onto the ice. Blair Betts has joined us now. And uh, Blair, after a long time of rehabbing, how do you feel? And uh, how about joining the Rangers organization? Uh, well, I feel pretty good out there, actually. Um, you know, it's been about 10 months since I played in a game, and uh, not including the preseason, but I felt better as as uh, the training camp went on. And, um, yeah, two periods have went by so far, and things are going pretty well. Blair, can you tell us about the offseason? You had, you had the shoulder reconstruction. I, I understand you're from Edmonton. What all did you do to try to get yourself back and ready to go? Um, well, rehab was was slow and, and painful for sure. Uh, um, I didn't get uh, cleared to play until late August, and... At that point, uh, no one really knew what was going to happen. Um, and, you know, when I got the opportunity to come to Hartford, I was, just, I was really thrilled. You know, basically, I needed to get on the ice and play. It's, it, it had been a long time, and the past two seasons, I hadn't, hadn't played many games. So, um, yeah, I, the rehab was, was really long, and I just worked hard at it and, and probably didn't get on the ice as much as I should have. Uh, because of the shoulder rehabilitation, but um, I feel good now, so things are going well. So what are the goals of the season? What do you set for yourself as you go into this American League season with a new organization? Um, you know, basically, I know what I what I did in Calgary and in St. John. Um, I know what kind of player I am and what I have to do to be effective. And, uh, you know, the New York Rangers organization is no different. They, uh, you know, they traded for me and they know what to expect of me. And um, basically, I'm just, I'm trying to stay healthy this year and, and improve my game and, uh, you know, look for a spot in the NHL if that ever happens. Great to see you, Blair. Great to see you healthy. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Blair Betts, new member of the Rangers organization, acquired from the Calgary Flames. one nothing. Wolfpack lead the Phantoms. Jim Schoenfeld joins us right after this. Take a look at what happened in the second period. There was no scoring. Quality chances picked up for the Philadelphia Phantoms. Seven to four for the Wolfpack in the second. Shots on goal, 12 to eight for the Phantoms in the second period. 21-13 in favor of the Wolfpack for the game. Each team with four power play chances. Dominic Moore's power play goal, the difference in the game. And that came at 6-14 of the first period. Power play for Philadelphia to begin the third period. Oh with boy. Lane Over in the penalty box. <laughs> the puck won't go anywhere. Oh, too much. It's too wet. Much the water. ice is the ice, too wet. The ice is not. The water hasn't turned into ice. And a puck three times in a row there just stopped like it hit Velcro. John Slaney. And Freddie Meyer got knocked down in the collision with Bryce Lampman. Slaney, and now Meyer fires in. Full pack with uh, Blair Betts, Lawrence Nicola, Bryce Lampman, and Ken Jernander. Pucks up in the netting and stuck up in the yeah. netting and behind the glass. So face off deep in the Hartford zone. 
Players were looking for it. Couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah. Sam, we were talking about goaltending for the Rangers and their organization. Of course, LaBarba here playing well once again. Montoya, the Rangers' first rounder, plays in Michigan. Right. The Michigan Hockey Club ranked number one in the preseason poll starting the season. Number one in the country. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, there's a lot of expectations for him and his hockey club yeah, had a, by Red Barons. They had a 4-4 tie with the University of New Hampshire. <laughs> See, they don't know where it is. It's up in the, it's up in the <laughs> netting, but they think he has it. No, me, I'm I swear you. I don't. I don't have it. <laughs> it was up in the netting the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there, there it is. is. <laughs> Speaking of prospects, former first round draft pick of the Rangers, Hugh Jessamine, yeah. went back to uh, Dartmouth, and they too were ranked uh, in the 11. top 10. Oh, Number 11, 11 yeah. excuse me. In the early polls. So that's and pretty good stuff. Jessamine went to the camp in Calgary and physically is a lot then, stronger. He weighs about 225 yeah. now, John. 6'3, 225. And then came six, back. Four. They went to the Rangers facility and worked there every day. I was by there a few times. Every time I went there, he was there working out. And he, and he went from being, you know, a big kid to a young man, body-wise. And, and I really think that, you know, his quotes were in going back to play in Dartmouth where he, he had some unfinished business. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, I hope he has a good year because he's another part of what's very important for the Rangers' future. Rangers have a lot of kids in college and a lot of kids that are still playing junior hockey and a lot of kids in Europe that are maybe the best prospects aside from people like Feder Tutin. Right. right now, they're trying to get the Right water. now, the fans are watching one of the maintenance people <laughs> by skate himself. around. He's got to try to get the excess water. Well, here's why. Off. Here's why he's out there. Watch the puck. Stop. There's a lot of urching going around. <laughs> well, he, he went and did about like nine somebody had a kids. remote control <laughs> on that. <laughs> 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 Oh, good. 35 seconds to go to power play. LaBarbera makes the save. Rebound, Umberger, save. LaBarbera with two good ones. Uh, that first one, the rebound got away from him. That created the second shot. Umberger was left all alone. Lead to Kane. Boyd Kane moves in. Tootin takes it, fires, and it goes into the bench of the Wolfpack. So they bring it back into the Wolfpack zone for a faceoff. 18 seconds to go in the Philadelphia power play. And right now it's Jason LaBarbera who is yeah. keeping the Wolfpack ahead. Shots were 13-1 at one point in favor of Hartford. It's now 21-15. This first shot here, that one got away from Jason. When you when you want to make a save, and I don't think he had much traffic, you don't want the puck to go back in front, especially high in the slot like that. Try and put those in the corner. White with a face-off win. Jones with a shot that's blocked. And the puck taken away and cleared by Jernander. And that should just about do it for the Phantoms power play. Third period, minute and a half in. Wolfpack with a 1-0 lead. Teams are back at full strength. And Philadelphia 0 for 5 on the power play in the game. And an icing on the Phantoms. They had two shots on goal to the Phantoms on that last power play opportunity. And we talked about better two feet. Looking at the stat sheet that we get during the intermission, Ballet's only had one shot through two periods. He was all over the puck in the first grade. And I thought a little more quiet during the second period of play. Ballet at the top of the circle, but Almer was tied up by Bosch on the faceoff. And here is Grenier, who's back from his fighting major with the puck. Cleared it out. He and Josh Gratton of Philadelphia went at it late second period. Ben Stafford. Puck was tipped into the Wolfpack zone. Chased down by Vosch. Hits the side of the net. And the Wolfpack take over. Giroux was stopped. And Freddie Meyer. And that... Here's a chance for Giroux. He scores! Off the turnover! Alexander Giroux with a great move in front. It's 2 0 Hartford. Now, Ballet's line with Giroux and Ulmer give their team a 2 0 lead early here in the period. Watch Meyer on the puck. You know, Sam, uh, there was a stick that jammed his elbow by Giroux. Created the turnover. I don't know if we'll see it again, but as Meyer went to make the pass, uh, and he was jammed by Giroux's stick right on his hand. That made a bad pass, and Giroux took the puck back 
That beautiful pass, and he made it look easy in scoring the 2 0 goal. Big goal for the Wolfpack. Here's Eric Malosh sending it in for Philadelphia. Chased down by Boyd Kane. Lawrence Nicolette on him. Lane Ulmer will get an assist. Alexander Giroux. Who came over from Ottawa. As part of the Greg DeVries deal. Giroux from Ulmer and Bale at 209. Ulmer has two assists in the game. It might have been Nicolette. I'm not sure, but Myers got the puck. Now watch his right elbow. He's going to make a pass. Watch his right elbow. Here comes the stick right there. See that? That's, 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 that's Giroux. Giroux, yeah. And Giroux goes to the net. Here's the pass. Beautiful pass by Ulmer. And there you see the finish. But Giroux didn't just stand around. He reached out and tapped his elbow. That made the bad pass and create the turnover. He then went to the net. And Ulmer with a beautiful feed. And it's 2-0 in favor of Hartford. Slaney going back after the puck. Around for Mark Murphy. Pitkinen finds the open man. And it hits the outside of the net. The two defensemen were both in deep. Pitkinen found Slaney. And Slaney hit the outside of the net. And finally, LaBarbera well, stopping play. Again, when you back check without the puck, pick somebody up, get near them in case the puck comes there. And this was the trainer that was hit for the offensive play. The, Ra the Hartford Wolfpack on their back check, they relaxed. And when they relaxed, it almost cost them a goal as Slaney, the defenseman, jumped in. And he was forced wide by LaBarbera. And again, the puck not able to go in the goal as LaBarbera hangs on for a faceoff. But you can't relax on your back check. Something could happen, and it did happen, and nearly a goal against. Betts on the faceoff with White. Phantoms control. Chipped ahead by Seidenberg. Hustling into the corner. The battle there. Patrick Sharp and Ken Jernander. Good hit on Ryan Reddy by Kondratiev. Ortmeyer's clearing attempt was denied. Now it comes out. Here's Jernander moving in. Jernander goes in on Randy Jones. Shoots high. And deflects off the glass into the netting. Kenny Jernander, when he lets it go, he hits a net on that play. He'd like to score. I mean, he gets a lot on it. Watch here. As that's Jernander, who ends up with a shot on goal. He's involved in a battle. And then Kondratiev comes over and wins the puck from Reddy. And that's what Jim Schoenfeld was talking about during the intermission. The defensemen have to win those battles as young defensemen. Now watch Jernander rip it here. And he rips it. Oh, it deflected. That's what happened. Off a stick. Good save by Nidamaki. Nearly four minutes into the third period. Wolfpack with a 2-0 lead. Murphy got around. Grenier centers through. And that shot by David Prince went wide around the glass and is cleared out of the zone. Dominic Moore moves in on David Prince. Cuts to the middle, but a good play by Tony Bosch coming back for Philadelphia. Ben Eager dumps it in and gets taken out of the play by Jeff McMillan. Dylan trying to clear, hit his own man. Dominic Moore avoids Umberger. Hamilton gets knocked down by Boyd Kane. Kane moves in. He was checked. And the puck sent off the glass and out of the zone. Eric Malash moving it across. And deep again is Boyd Kane. He's tied up by Bryce Lampman. Puck kept alive along the board. Bale is there for Hartford. Kane tried to move his way in front. Bale stayed with him. No, it's oh, called a hooking penalty and a power play to Philadelphia. And that wasn't called. The Hartford club had a three on one. It was Bale who created the turnover. And the referee said he created the turnover by hooking his player down. So Ballet, who looks a little frustrated here, Sam. Oh, we got a fight goal. Well after the play. Umberger. And that is Giroux. Giroux. Alexander Giroux. I don't know how it started. I didn't see it. It was over towards the benches. Yeah. 
That's a, that came out of the blue. Absolutely out of nowhere, yeah. And Umberger looks like he got oh nailed. Oh, boy. On the schnoz. He is cut up. I don't imagine he's had too many scraps in his career, no. huh? He hasn't played for a long time. He no. also played college hockey in Giroux. He just got, and he just threw, I don't know how it started. They just went at it. Alexander Giroux is 6'3", 191. Let's take a look at the penalty, Sam, as the puck gets moved here. Ballet. Marginal. Marginal, but it's called, and it would have been a three-on-one, by the way. This is Umberger there as he tried to hit. I think it was Moore over there. Yes. Kane with a bump on Hamilton. 2 nothing score. It'll be a power play as Ballet was the original penalty. So the Phantoms, who trail by two, have a chance to get onto the board here. The referee, Sam, by the way, is over at the Phantom bench talking things over. I, I suspect, no, I didn't see how it started, so I can't say. But I suspect the Philadelphia bench is trying to work the referee to get an instigator or something along those lines to get a two-man advantage. That's John Stevens, the head coach of the Philadelphia Phantoms, who played in Hartford for a while with the Whalers, played in their organization, played in the Flyers organization with the Phantoms, then uh, suffered an eye injury. That cut short his playing career, and he became a coach. First an assistant coach, and now the last five years a head coach. Ballet for hooking at 5.05. Power play number six for the Philadelphia Phantoms. Freddie Meyer. Patrick Sharp, Peter White, Ryan Reddy up front for the power play for Philadelphia. The Wolfpack. Here's John Slaney with a puck in the long shot. Save LaBarbera through traffic. Boy, he's that good. was a Patrick Sharp shot from just inside the blue line. Yeah, he is good. And watching him live here, watching him confident, he had to react to a, a ricocheting puck there. And he uses his size. He doesn't panic. Nothing seems to go through him. I like watching him play. Umberger and Giroux got five minutes each for fighting. Wolfpack with Dominic Moore on now. Moore and Ortmeier with Tutin and Kondratchev. Shot by Meyer, he scores! So the Phantoms break through with their sixth power play of the game. And now it's a two to one game. And that changes the complexion here with 13.55 to go. Meyer made sure he got it over about three different Wolfpack players. Look at him go down. Two down, one up, and through the traffic, it goes over top of the catching glove of Jason LaBarbera. Good hard shot. Good hard shot, smart shot, just to get it over top of the sliding players. So the Philadelphia club on the board, and we have a tight game. Freddie Meyer scored 14 goals last season for the Phantoms, his first season in professional hockey after playing four years at Boston University. So Meyer gets the goal, and it's a two to one game. Hartford leading. Wolfpack have led since the 614 point of the first period. Tutin with a long shot, got away from Nidamaki. The rebound cleared up. Kondratyev gave it away, and it's brought out by the Phantoms three on two. Ben Stafford. Good play by Kondratyev, but his pass hit his own man, Craig Weller. Loose in front. Bosch gets tied up by Tutin. That was a big play. It was because the Barbara missed the puck coming off the side of the net. Race for the puck. Almer got there, but a shot deflected into the corner. Meyer got the goal for Philadelphia from Sharp and Reddy at 6.05, a power play goal. 2 to 1, Hartford leading it, just under 13 minutes to go, third period. Ortmeier sends it in. Slaney moves it, and Malash blocked. Jernander gets it over to Betts. There, bets into the corner against John Slaney. Ortmeier created the turnover for the Hartford team. Grenier sends it back in. And there was an indicate, there was a situation where the Whalers got, or Whalers. <laughs> I knew I'd say it once, the Wolfpack oh, baby. got back on side. <laughs> the tag up roll. Oh. <sighs> Remember, Nick, once I would say it. Nick Patillo played for the yeah. Whalers in WHA days. The old World Hockey Association. 
Dominic Moore swinging around the net playing it back and that's what Gordy Howe was on the team that's right and one one time you had Gordy with his two sons yeah. Mark and Marty playing for the Hartford Whalers building hasn't changed much John. No. <laughs> It, it was flashbacks walking in here. <laughs> Shot by White, saved by LaBarbera. Good hustle by the Phantoms here. They get into a lot of loose pucks. First half of the game controlled by the Wolfpack. Second half, the Phantoms elevating their game. But a turnover led to Hartford's second goal and a big one by Alexander Giroux. There's one hustle game. by Ortmeyer again, Sam. He created another turnover. And Tutin made a nice little There's pass to Kondrachev. Penalty upcoming on Philadelphia. Yep. Tutin is deep. Rose is going to go. Ortmeyer drew it after that great play in his own zone. Ortmeyer toward the net, knocked down by Meyer. And a power play for Hartford coming up. 11.07 to go to in the third. 2-1, to one. Wolfpack leading it. You look for good shifts. Jed Ortmeyer hustles right across, knocks his man off the puck that creates a turnover, and then watch him over here without the puck, head up ice. He's got a half a step, and you see how he's hooked? Mm -hmm. And hooked, then hooked. They call out water skiing. The player in behind, Vosch, is water skiing, and he is now in the penalty box, and watch the Hartford power play go to work. Vosch for hooking at 8.53, Wolfpack's fifth. Power play of the game. Yeah, one for four with six shots. I think that's a good call by the official. We got to open the game up some. Mm -hmm. And players without the puck should not be allowed to be held and hooked like that at all, ever. It's got to be called. Chad Weisman with Joseph Ballet and Jeff Hamilton up front. Ooh. Better Tutin and Maxim Kondrachev at the point. Shot by Hamilton. Blocked. He gets knocked down. Hamilton's not a big guy, but as we pointed out, skates very well and can score that's one of the reasons Jim Schoenfeld and the Rangers organization wanted him here in Hartford he signed a contract with the Hartford Wolfpack well when you have a person that scores 43 goals in the American League that means he can break a game open mm -hmm. and he now has a chance here working the power play in a 2-1 game if his team scores it's, it's like breaking it open a little bit his first shift of the game was his best one in this one. He had two great scoring chances. Born in Englewood, Ohio. Played four years at Yale. And then... He played a year in Finland, too, you know? Yes. That? And this is his third year as a pro. He's not gotten to the NHL level. He's 27 years old. Wolfpack. Dominic Moore sends it in, steered away by Nidamaki. The clearing attempt was knocked down. Good play by Lawrence Nicolet. Here's Jernander across with Ulmer and Moore. Four forwards for the power play. Jernander playing the point, stops the puck, feeds Lawrence Nicolet. Back to Jernander, quick move, shot by Hamilton, save. All because of a turnover, Sam. Jones had trouble clearing the zone. And when he didn't clear the zone, Three passes later is a shot on goal. 20 seconds to go in the Hartford power play. Well, 9.25 to go yeah. in the third. I just watched Jones go to the bench, and he slammed the door shut hard. He knows that he didn't get the job done. I mean, he, you try, but sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to. But at least he recognized that he, he made an error. Nidamaki out to play the puck. It was blocked. Good play by Ortmeier. Power play is over. With two shots on goal. Wolfpack one for five in the power play. Ortmeier's pass was blocked. He recovers the puck. Blair Betts. Craig Weller is there, number 36. The back pass taken away and cleared out by Ryan Reddy for Philadelphia. Patrick Sharp spun around by Grenier. Sharp fires. Save made by LaBarbera. He covers a, up. It's a tricky play for a goaltender. A lot of after the whistle stuff. Things settle down. The officials get in the middle of it. 8.40 to go, third period. Number four is Jones. The defenseman finds the puck, but doesn't get it out of the zone. Watch, one pass. Here comes another. They make that two, three shot on goal. All because the puck wasn't cleared out of the zone. But again, Jones went to the bench, and he recognized that he had not gotten the job done. 
Out of Clarkson College. Yes, played a couple of years there. He was the rookie of the year for the Philadelphia Phantoms last season. Two to one. Wolfpack leading the Phantoms. Oh boy. There was a mistake again in coverage deep in the Hartford zone. Puck brought out by Blair Betts. Remember, Betts hasn't been for a long time either, and he was the centerman down low. The defenseman was up high. He's got to stay there. And the Philadelphia team moved the puck. So as, as a player who hasn't played in a long time, you, you try to gather your instincts and get your game back. Sometimes it takes time. Puck stopped by Freddie Meyer for Philadelphia, able to swing it around. David Prince, number three. The defenseman lifting it in. That shot by Kane was blocked. Kondrachev trying to move it. Malosh with a good pass. Vosh comes in. Couldn't get a shot off. Good recovery by Tutin. Now Vosh has it again. They're going to call Tutin on a hold. Yep. Here's Seidenberg winding. Shot to flex into the corner. Played by Boyd Kane. Delayed penalty. On Hartford, now the whistle stops play, holding. Started with that good pass by Malosh. And then Tutin got twisted around, but he used his arms to gather him in the player. Now watch. There's a reach into the outside. Look at the left hand. is off the stick and it's holding. And in the eyes of the referee, it's a holding penalty. And the seventh power play of the game for the Philadelphia Phantoms. It comes with 7-16 remaining, third period. Six and over the Wolfpack the, with a two-to-one lead. Six over the last two periods, though, right? On the power play, they only had one in the first I period. Think you're right about that. Yeah, six over the last two periods. And in fact, almost just over a period and a half. Tutin for holding at 12-44. Ryan Reddy moves it around to Peter White. White. Back to the point. Meyer down low. That shot saved LaBarbera on Reddy. Oh. Another save by LaBarbera on Patrick Sharp. Meyer's pass intercepted. Chad Weisman trying to break down. Weisman moves in. Centers and Meyer gets back to break it up. John Slaney brings it across. Slaney's pass gets through to, Ryan, to Ryan Reddy. That's steered away with a stick by LaBarbera, and then the net gets knocked off. You know, Sam, the Phantoms, they do a great job setting their power play up here to get a couple of shots, but that first shot from the slot was not a clean shot. I don't know if it was Reddy or who it was. Right here. See the check from behind? So it wasn't a hard shot, but this one here, that went up off the goaltender, LaBarbera, and did he make a great save there? I mean a great save. Not so much the first one, but the second one. Not that one. The one coming up to his right there. Oh, man. Did he rob Sharp with his right arm? Wolfpack at one point at the end of the first period had outshot Philadelphia 13 to 1. Shots are now 25 21 in favor of the Wolfpack. Phantoms on the power play, a minute to go on the man advantage. 6.15 to go, third period. 2-1, to one. Hartford leading it. And Umberger's back after going for repairs. Umberger trying to stuff it in on the wraparound, denied. And a good job by LaBarbera at well, the post. The referee's got to blow the whistle, Sam. You lose sight of the puck, it's your job to blow the whistle. LaBarbera had that puck pinned against the goal post for a count of one, two, and almost three. At least I thought so. And if you're not sure where it is, it's your job to blow it dead. Oberger made a nice play here to, to try and jam it in on the near side. The Barber getting a lot of work once the first period had expired. There's Oberger. Now watch the, the little. Now the puck is there. I mean, it's hidden. He's got it. And there's a. I mean, the play still going. And then finally blown. That's all part of officials learning too, right? And you know, John, as you pointed out earlier, it's a one referee yeah. system in the American League. Well, if there had a. Well, we'll talk to you in a second. Chances in front are blocked. Pass back to Slaney. Sharp winds it in deep. Lampman had his stick held for a while. Got it loose, sharp in the corner. Take it away by Nicollet. Nicollet able to move it up the board. Stop by Slaney. Across to Meyer. White off the boards to Reddy. And around to Sharp. Good puck movement by the Phantoms. 
20 seconds to go in the power play. Finally cleared by Bryce Lampman. Getting back to that play at the net, if there was two officials, like we have in the NHL, the one official almost climbs up on top of the net because he's already down there, right? So it makes yeah. it easier for him to see where the puck is to blow it dead or not. One official, it's a little different. You've got to skate end to end. Power play is over. Philadelphia one for seven on the power play in the game. The Wolfpack maintain a two to one lead with 5.05 to go in the third period. Eric Malash past tip. Kondratyev has it for Hartford. Set in. Bale bangs with Seidenberg. Bale went down. Randy Jones moves it up. Here's Malash. Off the skate. Bale turns it the other way. Tipped ahead by Giroud to Ulmer. Back pass broken up by Seidenberg. His pass for Eager goes all the way down. McMillan took a hit, but Bale moves it up. Slaney. That'll be an icing. 424 to go. Third period. And the Hartford Wolfpack hold on to a two-to-one lead. Coming up next on MSG Network is Nick's life, a behind-the-scenes look at the New York Knicks. Are they healthy? In training camp, uh, they look healthy. Uh, Allen Houston, yeah. uh, they're bringing him yeah. along slowly, and but uh, good start to preseason. Nick's life is coming up next. Stay tuned for that. It'll be seen and shown in its entirety. I got four tickets the other day. So when Shaq comes to town, ooh, already? Right down, I'm kidding. Are you yeah. kidding me? Oh no! I can see you. I can see you uh, in the front no. row there. <laughs> so, you know, it'll be, it'll be There's Spike a lockout Lee, going on, John, Sam. John McEnroe, John Davidson. There's a lockout happening, man. I'm going to be in the front row, right in front of my television. Nine thousand two hundred four in attendance tonight for the season opener for the Hartford Wolfpack. We'll lead two to one with four thirteen remaining. Dominic Moore and Alexander Giroux, the goal scorers for Hartford. Freddie Meyer, the goal scorer for Philadelphia. Maxim Kondrachev back for the puck. Here's Kondrachev. And now Dominic Moore. Long shot, gloved side of the net by Nidamaki. Yeah. Holds on. I know Kondrachev on that play. Moved the puck back to Moore, but at least it was a good pass. And what he did was not get into the offensive zone. He's got a, a one goal lead here. He's a defenseman. So make sure you don't get trapped up ice. See, they moved it there and he stopped at the blue line and allowed Moore to move in and force a face off deep in the Philadelphia zone. You know, for the life, you don't want to get caught up ice late in a shift with the two of them huffing yeah. and puffing. They've had a lot of ice time, Toot and Gudrachev. Only one power play goal against them, and, nothing at even strength. And you're looking at two very important parts yeah. of the future Rangers defense right there. Two big kids, oh, strong. Two, yeah, I think Tootin's ahead of Kondratyev, yeah. but, but, uh-oh. But they're working at it, you know. That's what it's all about, playing for the Farm Club. Development, yeah. confidence. Blair Betts. Peter White takes it back for Philadelphia. 3.20 to go. Third period. 2-1. to one, Hartford leading it. Ready. Controlled by Bryce Lampman. Off the stick of Jernander. And Ryan Reddy sends it in. Lampman goes over to play it. In after him, Ben Stafford. Stafford rides him down. Good effort by Stafford. And the puck lifted out of the zone. Here's Malash. Stopped by Lampman, and it's cleared out by Giroux. LaBarbera stops it. By the way, the, the goaltending box behind the net, that is a seven-week experiment. experiment. Yeah. So that will not be, not necessarily be a fixture, but it'll be yeah. revisited after seven weeks. The, the game here, I don't think it's affected the game very Not much. Not at all. I don't but, think so. But at the same time, I don't know how much these two goaltenders really handle the mm -hmm. puck. They haven't handled it much, though, Sam. They, you haven't seen them in the corners. Right. On the icings or the uh, fire down of the puck, sending it down on the penalty kill. Whoop, here we go. Wolfpack moving in. Bale yeah. missed the net with the shot. They've uh, they've been able to go out and move the, and get the puck before it crosses the goal line, and that's legal. But you haven't seen them go into the corners. 
Now you're paid to stop the puck. You know, and, and what you do with the puck is secondary, and some players like Marty Brodeur are fantastic at it and can, can control a game in doing so. Chad Weisman made a bad play there, didn't get to the red line. He was a stride away and got called for icing, so the faceoff deep in the Wolfpack zone. Here again, you see those lines coming out from the goal line back. That the goaltender can play it in the zone behind the net right there. But you can't play it in the corners behind the goal line. And it's where the puck is. His body can be outside, but if the, as long as the puck is inside that zone, he can play it. Good face-off win by Betts. He's taken a lot of face-offs in this game. Kondrachev couldn't clear. Puck around with a minute 45 to go in the third. Two to one Hartford. Wolfpack trying to get it out of the zone. Betts finally does. Slaney recovers. Right back in. Peter White sends it deep. Kondrachev lets it go for Tutin. Whoa. And Meyer got away with pulling down Jed Ortmeier as Ortmeier tried to bat at the puck. Volleyball style, he was spun around and pulled down by Freddie Meyer. A minute 15 to go. Now we watch to see if and when Nidamaki goes to the bench for an extra skater. Two to one Hartford. Lampman back for the puck. Pressured there by Eager. Well, he made a good play. Lampman drew two players to him and moved the puck. Nidamaki can't get to the bench. Wiseman moves in with a shot. Glove save. Nidamaki holds with 55.9 to go. You know, I was an example, Sam, of the goaltender not allowed to go into the corner and get the puck. So Lantman came back knowing he was going to have some buddy on him. And he avoided two different four checkers as Nidamaki's waving to the bench. Timeout's been called, I think. But, but here, and here's a shot on goal by Wiseman, which forces the faceoff deep in the Philadelphia zone. Good save, and he hangs on. Ortmeier here, that's when Meyer pulled him down. That certainly should have been a penalty. I mean, he, he wrapped his arms around him and pulled him down. But anyway, no call. But the other play I was talking about was it was like the puck was put deep. Landman had to go back and get it. The goaltender can't go there and help him because it's outside that box. So Landman had to deal with two four checkers, which he did, and he moved the puck. And that led to the shot on goal by Weissman and the faceoff inside the Philadelphia zone, as you see Ryan McGill taking charge along with Nick Fatiu. Fifty five point nine remaining. Here's that play we're talking about Sam. Look at the puck go into the corner here. Now LaBarber can he go get it and help out. No because it's against the rules. Right. So watch Lantman. He avoids one man. Now he avoids two and moves the puck. That trapped two different Philadelphia players. It was a nice play. Face off deep in the phantom zone. So this is a situation where if the Wolfpack can keep the puck pinned in. They can put this game away. And Philadelphia has not registered a shot the last two and a half minutes. Janander, Betts, Ortmeier, Lampman and Nicollet for Hartford. John Slaney for the Phantoms. Ortmeier lost his stick, has it back, played off the boards. Good job by the Wolfpack in deep. Blair Betts, 40 seconds to go. Takes a hit from Pitkin and stays with the puck. Betts wrap around on the backhand, stopped by Nidabaki, and he grabs it. Yeah, funny. Let with go the blocker of a, hand. Yeah, let go of a stick like Dominic Hasha can grab it with the with the blocker hand, like you said, Sam. Betts with a good, actually good play by Nicolet. The puck was chipped forward into the zone, and then Betts went deep, made some play happen, and knocked seconds off the clock. Here's the play where Betts is deep. He'll try the wrap around here, and he'll stay with it. And that forces another faceoff. Good effort all over the place by the Hartford Club in the last few seconds here. 32.1 to go. They win another faceoff. Nice play by Hamilton. Around the net, Meyer. Stepping up was Kondrachev with a good play. Goaltender can't get out of the net yet. Puck went off a skate. Tutin takes over. 18 seconds to go. Off the boards to Wiseman. In deep. That's going to be it. The Wolfpack have pinned the Phantoms. And the Phantoms unable to get an extra skater on. Opening night in Hartford, and the Hartford Wolfpack defeat the Philadelphia Phantoms 2-1. to one. Well, the Hartford club with a great first period, but only game get themselves a 1-0 lead. LaBarbera with 21 saves on 22 shots, and a good opening night win for their hockey club. The Philadelphia club played better the last two periods, yes. made a much more even game, but Jason LaBarbera starts right where he left off, Sam with a real key second and third periods of play. 
And there were some good signs here. I thought Feder Tutin played a strong game. As you pointed out, John, the last five minutes or so, the Wolfpack really tightened up defensively, oh, yeah. and Philadelphia didn't get many chances. The last four and a half minutes, Philadelphia never registered a shot on right. goal. So that's when the Hartford Club, you know, you show some offense. You try to, you wonder how guys are going to react with a 2 1 lead. Betts had a lot of ice time. Kadrachev and Tutin and Nick, all the guys, they, they, didn't give, they didn't give up a thing. The last four and a half minutes. A couple of big plays while well, the Barbara's goaltending for sure a terrific job as he uh, only allowed one power play goal. But the effort by Alexander Giroux forced a turnover oh, yeah. wound up scoring what turned on out a, to be the game winning goal on a terrific pass from Omer that that little play by Giroux on the defenseman when he jammed his elbow and hand with his stick it forced a bad pass Omer was right there Giroux went to the net and did he ever make it look easy John. It's just great being around the yeah. rink again. Yeah, sure. I agree. Ah, love it. Thanks to everybody. Our producer, Joe Whalen, director, Bob Lewis, our stage managers, Paula McHale, Charlie Cucciera was uh, our associate director. Janine McLaronzo was here handling our Chiron and statistics. And our stat man in the booth was Emmett McGuire. And our next telecast on... Fox Sports New York. It's the Hartford Wolfpack at the Bridgeport Sound Tigers next Saturday night at 7 p.m. Don't forget, following the American League Championship Series Game 3, MSG Sports Desk will wrap up with Steve Cangelosi in Boston, John Gino and Fran Healy and Keith Hernandez in the studio. They'll break down Game 3 of the American League Championship Series. Coming up next in its entirety, it's Nick's Life on MSG Network. For John Davidson, this is Sam Rosen. We love our hockey. See you next time.